Uh, hi, everybody, and welcome to the uh, third uh, part of the basal ganglion. We're going to be going tonight over some treatment uh, modalities. Now, please understand these are neurological treatment modalities, and we have to address the biochemical aspect of the basal ganglion. So let's let's just remember that if somebody comes in with a movement disorders, this is probably never going to stop. And what we want to do is we the whole purpose of these uh, doing this therapy is to find out which, you know, this is, if it's right hand, it's going to be left basal ganglion and left brain, that whole loop that we went over in part two. The cerebellum, this is key, the cerebellum from the right hand, okay, through the globus emboliform fires into the right, uh, left red nucleus and into the left ventral anterior nucleus of the thalamus and fires to the brain. Why is that pathway so important? Because the, uh, I'm sorry, i make sure I said this right, the ventral anterior. And, and so the reason that's important is because the basal ganglion fires through the ventral anterior nucleus of the thalamus also as it fires from the frontal lobe to the basal ganglion back to the thalamus and then back to the frontal lobe. So we're able to use the uh, tremor side here Where's my hand? Tremor side, ipsy cerebellum, contrafrontal, frontal, uh, contralateral basal ganglion. Uh, so, and again, I cannot say that if somebody comes in and says, I want this tremor to stop, you better tell them this is never going to happen. <laughs> what we want to do is this is part of the treatment program. That's never going to happen. And what we want to do is keep it from going into this hand to keep you mobile. Uh, to keep you mo moving from your upper and lower extremities, to keep you out of a walker, to keep you peeing and pooping on yourself, and to potentially keep you from dying from asphyxiation because somebody's going to have to uh, shove a tube down your throat for you to actually breathe, and hopefully you won't throw it up and then aspirate and it go into your lungs. I mean, those are just realistic things. This is what people die from, from Parkinson's, but they're not actually treated. The biochemical markers um, are going to just be a few things here that have to be have to be looked at with treatment. Uh, we've got to look at uh, number one, inflammation. Uh, so when we're looking at inflammation, are we looking at uh, leaky gut? That's number the probably the number one overlooked leading cause of inflammation in the human body because eighty to ninety percent of people have a leaky gut. I trained my doctors who were in my coaching program exactly how to test that and treat it. Uh, does a person have metabolic syndrome? That's another driver of, of, of inflammation. And dentition, okay, which uh, if you're not looking for por porphyromus gingivalis, which is a bacteria from periodontal disease, and streptococcus mutans, which is part of the uh, uh, cavities and, and teeth problem, that's amongst other things. I'm just giving you the big picture here. You know, you're not going to be able to help these people. All right. So inflammation, we've got to get our blood sugar under control. We've got to look at occult pathogens uh, like uh, uh, bacteria, uh, occult bacteria that's in our gut, uh, pathogens that's in our gut. Uh, we've got to look at uh, mold. We have to look at tick bites. Uh, those are the things that uh, we have to deal with. And is the person getting enough blood flow to the to the body? And we can actually put a I didn't bring it in with me, but a thermal scan in the uh, head, we should be no more than uh, two degrees different between your face and your hands and face and your feet. If we are not getting adequate blood flow in the hands and the feet uh, from a neurological standpoint, uh, we're not going to get blood flow to the brain. So this person is, quote, cold or pale. All right. So those are the things that we, from a big picture standpoint, that we have to look at from a biochemical, and I'm giving you this not from a 30,000 feet, but more of a 60,000 uh, feet perspective. So if you're not looking at these areas, don't be the person that called me up and says, this person that just came in has Parkinson's, what do you do? Uh, I give a 16 hour seminar on this and I can't go over that with you in a five minute conversation on, on, on the phone. But we have to look at the biochemical markers. We have to address what we find. I can tell you from my personal experience, people who have Parkinson's are going to have between 20 and 30 biochemical markers that have to be systematically addressed to actually slow down or prevent and and maybe, maybe, I'm saying maybe, even reverse the problem. But I wouldn't hang my hat on the uh, reversal part, more on the slowing it down part. So 
by the time a person has a tremor, there's a lot of damage uh, in the brain. So let's talk about what we can do from a uh, neurological standpoint. And I'm just letting you know right now, and it hurts me to say you take, tell you this, but this is the honest to God truth because I spent six years of my life uh, going to school to get a diploma and a fellowship in functional neurology is that if you if you just treat the patient from a neurological standpoint, this is going to be complete and other utter failure. So don't be that person. You know, I can tell you that with, you know, 15 years of experience and going to school for six years, I want I want it to be where I can treat this person neurologically and solve this problem. But it's not going to happen that way because again, you've got to fix them biochemically at the same time address the neurological disorder. And remember, if we don't address the gut because the first movement disorder is actually in the gut. So let's get go through this. One of the things that we're gonna do when we look at this, uh, with, when we look at this person with a basal ganglionic disorder, typically what will happen, you'll start to notice that they have slowness of movement first, okay? Usually that happens before we ever get this tremor because a person that, the alpha synuclein starts to climb up the vagus nerve and it starts to destroy uh, the uh, uh, substantia nigra pars compacta. Now, why does this happen to impact the, the direct pathway first? And because when you activate the substantia nigra pars compacta, dopamine leans more toward the direct pathway and acetylcholine leans more toward the indirect pathway. So if we have more uh, of a direct pathway that's stimulated through dopamine and the substantia nigra pars compacta, which produces dopamine, uh, becomes degenerated, then we see that we'll actually lean more toward the indirect path. I'm sorry, the direct pathway being damaged first. So we start to we start to see this forward head movement, shoulders start to move forward. I actually went by and got my wife up. A, a Christmas card, and no joke, as I'm checking out at Kroger, this guy's walking by, and you you can't even make this up. If it wasn't so grotesque, I would run over there and actually want to take a picture from the guy. But he had hypomemia, which is the, you know, the facial drooping, and then literally salivation coming down his mouth, almost hitting his elbow on the cart where he was pushing, okay? And and so see these are these are signs of people come into your clinic with that he may not have a tremor but he's got early signs of Parkinsonism. Okay, now how we're going to address this is number one we are going to have to do we're going to have to get a metronome. You can go online and you can purchase one. I mean it's free. All right. So and I apologize I should have already had this up but uh, metronome you can just Google it. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to speed these people up. So one of the things we're going to do is when we do the test, we're going to do rock, paper, knife. Okay, rock, paper, knife, right and left hand. Okay, rock, paper, knife. Okay. And you're going to start to see that they're very, very slow. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to get the metronome and we're going to do rock, paper, knife. And this is the beautiful thing about neurology. You find out what they can't do and then you make them do it. Okay, but you have to be able to interpret this. The reason they're slowing down, okay, is because the direct pathway is abnormally firing. So we wanna start out at 40 beats a minute and see if they can do that, okay? And then we're gonna go from 40 beats to 47. Most people at 47, they're gonna come off the beat. So they have to hit their hand on the beat. So that's gonna be their therapy, okay? We're gonna get this timing linked together with, uh, with this uh, metronome. Uh, we're going to take it. We have problems more with this right hand in early stages. They will have more with one side or the other. We can actually take this hand with the metronome and we can do one minute therapy and we can hit the side of our hip. This. Okay, I'm trying to do this without closing it up and canceling everything on my. All right, that would be one way to do it. Okay. Uh, another way would be we're going to take our hands and we're going to go in circles. All right. Now, these people who have these direct pathways are not going to want to go in circles. They're going to want to do things like this. Okay. The reason is because their uh, red nucleus is not functioning at its peak level. And the reason it's not because it's in the mesencephalon. Because in the mesencephalon, again, that's where uh, dopamine is made. So remember, nothing happens in isolation with these chronic health disorders. You may not be able to understand it. You may not be able to interpret it. But no one has a, a chronic health problem in isolation of everything else. It just doesn't happen that way. 
because uh, I had a doctor call me and said his staff uh, was diagnosed with uh, cancer. She had skin cancer. I go, tell me what else is going on. And she goes, he goes, oh, well, she has epileptic, epileptic seizures at, together. So see, those are linked together from a chronic health problem. And so anyway, let's, let's not get too far down that road. Okay. So there's a lot of things we can do. We, we can do rock, paper, knife. Okay. We can do but the metronome at 40 beats, and we, we want to get them in their uncomfort zone, if you will, okay? And we got to push them a little bit. So we want to find out what, it, we're going we're gonna to get started at 40 and go up to 47, I'm sorry, 40, yeah, 47 and then 54. I'll get my numbers right here in just a minute. So 40, 47, 54. We want to, we want to ideally get them at 54 beats a minute for three minutes, but don't do that at the beginning. We're going to do 30 second intervals because this is going to frustrate these people to the point where they're going to get upset with themselves. Because again, all of this looks easy till it's not. And so rock, paper, knife, one hand here. Okay. If they have it bilateral, of course, we can do it bilateral. Uh, and then we can clap both hands, big circles. And then also we're going to do a toe tapping. And when we just, this is my foot right here. So we're, we're together right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to own the beat. We're going to go tap, tap, back to center, and tap, go backwards. Tap, 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 tap. We'll have to do each leg individually at the beginning. Now, well, I just, I show these people how to do it, and then they do it at home. <clears throat> and I say, when you get to the next level, let me know. So if you're 47, when you get to 54, let me know and we'll progress you up to the next level, which would be instead of going from 30 seconds to one minute, then we'll end up going into three minutes of therapy. And well, here we are, tap, tap back to center, back, tap, back, back to center, forward, forward, back, I'm sorry, forward, center, back. And as they start to do this, then we can act, when they get good at it, then we'll just do each foot to get, we'll do it here and back to center, back to center. Now, why would we worry about the lower extremities? Again, because the red nucleus has to do with our flexures of our shoulders and our hips. Now, the next thing we'd want to do is we would want to do nonlinear complex movements, and we want to do this looking at the index finger. They can't go any faster than what they can look at their finger. So it's going to be like this, if I can get over here. See. So we're going to look at the finger, and we're going to do big movements, and we want to do it in the shoulder. Again, basal ganglion, shoulder, hips. What they're going to want to do is use this part of their, they, they just want to move this part. They have to move their shoulder like this, and they can only move it as fast as they can actually follow their finger, okay? And you need to watch patients because you'll be amazed at how they can't do that. They're coming off target. Now, if this is a right-sided problem, we're also going to do the right leg uh, as well. We're going to, they're going to take their shoes off, and they're going to look at their big toe. Now, most people can't do their upper and lower at the same time, especially standing up. So what they're going to have to do, they can do it standing with their upper extremities, but they're going to have to sit with their lower extremities, okay? Then what they will end up doing, we got, you know, monomodal, all right, upper and lower. And then once they get to where they can actually do this, we'll actually do our ABCs. Now, right now, I'm doing my upper and my lower at the same time, but I'm looking at my upper extremity. We'll do our ABCs all the way to Z. And then when we finish that, we're gonna do our ABCs all the way to Z, but we're, this time we're gonna do it with our upper extremity and lower, but we're gonna look at our great toe whenever we do that. Of course, they'd be sitting down when they do that, okay? We would also be doing vertical eye movements, okay? So what we wanna do is we're gonna take this finger uh, apart. We're gonna start out slow and go up and down. These are called micro saccades, as fast as we can. We'll do 10 of those, and if they, if they say, I'm getting getting dizzy or I'm you know, frustrated, just stop, we'll need to go down to five, okay? But typically 10 is not gonna uh, irritate these people. We wanna get up to 30 of these, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up taking it further and further apart. Now, here's what's important. These people ha are gonna have a difficult time saccading up. They won't have a problem saccading down, but saccading up, they're going to have a problem. So again, this is what we want them to do is, is saccade, take the finger up and down, okay? And uh, 
And so that's, we'll start out slow. Why would we want to do that? That's, this is the why that comes in. In the mesencephalon, we keep beating up the mesencephalon. We got the red nucleus for our shoulders, flexor for our hips, hip flexors. Um, dopamine is made in the mesencephalon. Now we have cranial nerve three and four that's in the mesencephalon. So through the, um, the uh, nucleus of Cajal, it's called the interstitial nucleus of Cajal. This is what allows the, our eye movements to go vertical like this, okay? So in the ponds, it's more horizontal, but with, with uh, Parkinson's issues, we want to activate, we want to crank up that mesencephalon. So we want to get these vertical eye movements going. So uh, those are the areas that we're going to look at uh, from uh, these, these movement disorders. Uh, the next thing that we would want to do is if you, I don't have one in here with me, but you can also take an OPK tape. Uh, you can go online and order these. They're, when I bought mine, I bought one for each exam room and my adjusting table. Uh, these are $35. And what happens in this situation, you have, if you will, it's, it's a tape <clears throat> and you can take it vertical. All right. And what we have here, um, uh, let's see if I can get this in red real quick. So what we have here is we've got one, one area that's, with, that's red. The next area is going to be white. The next area is going to be red. And then the next section is going to be white. So what we'd want to do is we'd want to take this tape and go vertical up and down. Okay. So what will happen in this situation when we, when we start to go up, we have this motion in our eyes that's called a pursuit. And then as uh, we get to the end, our orbit and our eyes can't go up any further, then we'll saccade down to the next to the next red tape. And then we'll do that 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 saccadic pursuit, saccadic eye movement. We would want to do this up and down. Okay. Now, one of the things, and I don't have time to, to explain this to you tonight, but we can go up and down, but we can also take these at an oblique angle. Okay. So, like for example, uh, let's say that I've got tremors on this right side. Uh, we can do vertical eye movements to activate the. Um, uh, we can do uh, uh, vertical eye movements to activate the mesencephalon up and down. If I have a right cerebellar problem, I'm going to have a left brain problem, left brain, left basal ganglion. So, what we can actually do, if you understand the art and the science behind this optokinetic tape, we can actually take it up and to the left, okay, to the left and down and to the left. So all of these are actually stimulating different canals and actually different eye movements, okay, and it's stimulating the, uh, as we go up, we're stimulating the mesencephalon. When we go down, we're stimulating the mesencephalon. When we go to horizontal, we're doing more uh, of the uh, paramedian pontine reticular formation, which is in the pontine as the name implies. But the point is we do this oblique to the up, uh, oblique down, and we're able to hit the brain and the mesencephalon simultaneously. And see, so we can take that OPK up and to the left, and we can do our, 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 can do our nonlinear complex movements with this right side, and left, uh, right side, upper and lower extremities. And this is really going to hit this basal ganglion really, really hard, okay? Now, if we have an indirect pathway uh, that's, that's uh, malfunctioning, one of the things that we're gonna have to do here is patients are gonna have to slow themselves down. So when you're doing the OPK, I'm sorry, the, the OPK, rock, paper, knife, rock, paper, knife, they're going real hard and real fast, okay? And when we do that, we're going to have to take it in the opposite direction. We're going to have to slow things down. So they're probably going to be going more than 54 beats a minute. So we want to slow them down to 47 beats a minute and 40. Okay, so we want them going. Okay, when you tell them to put their finger on their nose, they're going to do this thing. Okay, so we'd want to slow that down at 40 beats a minute. And it would be like beep, 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 beep. Okay, we want to slow them down in those situations. So what I've done here tonight is I've gone through some direct pathways. We're about to end because my 20 minutes are going to be up. Uh, but we've got to look at everything from a neurological, these neurological chronic 
health problems, complex chronic illnesses, no matter what they are, we have to look at them from a, biomed a biochemical standpoint. And then we have to actually uh, uh, do a neurological exam from head to toe and treat what we find. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. I look forward to seeing you on the next seminar. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, everyone.